In this video, we introduce ourselves to two very important classes of aqueous solutions, acids and bases. Acids and bases are among the most important electrolytes, playing key roles in many environmental, industrial and biochemical applications. They have characteristic physical and chemical properties that distinguish them from other electrolytes. Acids, for example, appear in many food products, especially citrus fruits, such as lemons, and they tend to have a sour taste. Many of them are highly reactive and they should be handled with great care. Bases can also be highly reactive, particularly with living tissue, and they should also be handled with care. They are soapy to touch due to a saponification reaction with the oils in our skin that produces soap. They also appear in foodstuffs such as red cabbage and rocket lettuce, and they tend to have a bitter taste. Acids can be loosely defined as substances that ionize in water to form H plus ions or hydrogen ions. And we have already seen how the molecular compound hydrogen chloride, which is a gas at room temperature and pressure, can be bubbled through water to produce HClAQ or hydrochloric acid. We further know that hydrochloric acid can also be represented as separate H plus ions and separate Cl minus ions dissolved in solution. The H plus ion is a hydrogen atom with its electron removed, so essentially a proton. And so acids are sometimes referred to as proton donors, since they donate protons to aqueous solutions when added to water. We classify acids in a number of ways. One is to classify them as strong acids and weak acids. A strong acid is an acid that is a strong electrolyte, and hydrochloric acid is one example of a strong acid. Nitric acid is another example. Strong acids, like strong electrolytes, ionize or dissociate completely when dissolved in water, so effectively they exist only in their ionic forms when dissolved in water. Of the hundreds of common acids that exist, there are only seven strong acids, and it's worth knowing what they are. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydroiodic acid, HI, hydrobromic acid, HBr, nitric acid, HNO3, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, perchloric acid, HClO4, and chloric acid, HClO3. Here are perhaps the three most common strong acids in some of their uses. Hydrochloric acid, you may know, is the main digestive fluid in the human stomach and is also the acid used to adjust the pH of swimming pools. Nitric acid is a very strong corrosive oxidizing acid that is used for dissolving metals and minerals to get metal ions in solution. And sulfuric acid is the acid that's used in car batteries. Weak acids are acids that are weak electrolytes. You may recall that we used acetic acid as an example of a weak electrolyte, and it dissolves in water to form the H plus ion and the acetate ion. You may also recall that the presence of the double arrow in this chemical equation indicates that the ionization process is reversible, and that at the same time that acetic acid molecules dissociate to their ions, the ions are recombining to form the molecule. HF or hydrofluoric acid is another example of a weak acid, and both are characterized by only partial ionization or partial dissociation of the compounds into their ionic forms. Other examples include literally hundreds of organic acids, which can loosely be described as carbon containing acidic compounds. With hydrofluoric acid, HF, nitrous acid, HNO2, boric acid, H3BO3, and phosphoric acid, H3PO4 being the most common examples of inorganic weak acids. Some examples of weak acids and their applications are shown here, with acetic acid being the main component of vinegar, ascorbic acid being better known as vitamin C, citric acid as we noted earlier is the acidic component in citrus fruits, and hydrofluoric acid is used in the etching of glass. Acids can also be classified in terms of the number of protons they can donate to a solution. For example, monoprotic acids are acids that yield or donate only one H plus ion per acid molecule to the solution. So hydrochloric acid and nitric acid are both examples of monoprotic acids. They only yield one H plus ion per acid unit when dissolved in solution. The charge on the corresponding anion is one minus for monoprotic acids. Diprotic acids are acids that yield two H plus ions per acid molecule, and the classic example here is sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Oxalic acid is another common example, H2C2O4. We can see that both of these acids donate two H plus ions to the solution, and the corresponding anions have a two minus charge. 
And finally, triprotic acids yield or donate three hydrogen ions per acid molecule, with the classic example here being phosphoric acid, H3PO4, which donates three hydrogen ions per acid molecule. And the corresponding charge on the phosphate anion is three minus. Now, bases are in some ways the opposite of acids. They are substances that react with or accept H plus ions, and they are sometimes known as proton acceptors. Bases tend to produce the hydroxide ion, the OH minus ion, when dissolved in water. And so obvious sources of bases include the group 1 metal hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc., as these salts are all readily soluble in water. But also the heavier group 2 metal hydroxides, which you may recall from our solubility rules, are also soluble in water. So calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide and barium hydroxide are also soluble sources of the hydroxide ion and are therefore bases. Solid sodium hydroxide can be dissolved in water to produce an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide. And we know from our solubility rules that sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte and so can also be represented as separate solvated sodium ions and separate hydroxide ions in solution. And similarly, the group two hydroxides, such as calcium hydroxide, also produce hydroxide ions. But for the group two metal hydroxides, two hydroxide ions are produced per formula unit. Like acids, bases can also be classified as strong or weak. Strong bases are bases that are strong electrolytes and they therefore ionize or dissociate completely when dissolved in water. And the two examples given earlier, sodium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide, are examples of strong bases. In fact, all of the soluble hydroxides are strong bases, including all group 1 metal hydroxides and the heavier group 2 metal hydroxides. Some applications of strong bases are noted here, with sodium hydroxide, sometimes known as caustic soda, used commercially as a drain cleaner and an oven cleaner, and calcium hydroxide, otherwise known as slaked lime, is used for mortar in bricklaying. Bases that are weak electrolytes are called weak bases. They are often the result of molecular compounds reacting with water to produce the hydroxide ion when dissolved. Ammonia is an example. When dissolved in water, ammonia produces the ammonium ion and the OH- hydroxide ion. In this case, the ammonia molecule does not contain any hydroxide ions as part of its structure yet it is considered a base because it provides a source of hydroxide ions when it is dissolved in and reacts with water. However, we can again see the double arrows in this equation, meaning that these reactions are significant in both directions, with the ammonia molecule only ionising or dissociating partially, making it a weak base. And so weak bases will typically be molecular in nature, and most happen to be organic in nature, meaning they contain carbon-hydrogen bonds in their structure. Examples include pyridine, C5H5N, which is used in a variety of synthetic processes, including as a precursor to pesticide synthesis. Ammonia, on the other hand, is an inorganic weak base used in household cleaning products. So in summary, both acids and bases can be classified as strong or weak, with strong acids and bases tending to be inorganic in nature, while weak acids and bases tend to be organic in nature, although not exclusively. In addition, acids can be further classified according to the number of H plus ions they yield per acid molecule, specifically being monoprotic, diprotic or triprotic acids.